Hello, welcome to this XML tutorial for the 70-461 exam. My name is John Deirdre, and I'm here to help you obtain a better understanding of XML within SQL Server. I'm recording this video for the Microsoft Born to Learn study groups. If you are studying for your SQL Server exams, stop by us and see us at borntolearn.mslearn.net slash certification. This presentation has four topics we are going to cover. What is XML? Working with XML data types, retrieving XML from SQL, and importing XML into SQL. So let's get started. So what is XML? XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. It is an extension of the web standard HTML. The difference between the difference being that HTML uses predefined tags that formats data on a web page. XML, on the other hand, is used to create custom elements that describes the data. Tags are used to define the beginning and ending of an element. In the case of the HTML tags, we are using the pre predefined tags that will put the word Smith into bold letters. With the XML, the begin and end tags are used to describe that the word Smith is the last name element. When you are formatting your XML, you can nest elements within each other. Here you can see we have both the first name and last name elements nested within the person element. Also notice the ID field. This is an attribute. Attributes are used to provide additional information about an element. In this case, what is the ID of the person? Now a well-formed document will have a root element that defines all the objects on that page. In this case, the people element is our root element. Now, SQL Server will implement XML in one of three ways, either as an XML data type to store data in a column within a table, to display relational data as XML using the for XML statement, or converting XML data into tabular data by using the open XML function. I will walk through each one of these implementations, and then we will do a demonstration on each. So what is the XML data type? XML data type, uh, just like any other data type, can be used to store data within columns. Here you can see in the person.person .person table of the AdventureWorks database, we have two columns uh, that are storing XML information, the additional contact info and the demographics. So they are defined as XML columns that will store XML data. You can also see right next to XML, it says person.additionalcontactinfo schema collection. Within SQL Server, you can attach XSD or schema definition sheets to define what tags can actually be used within an XML column. And that's what they're doing here. So if I write a select statement that's retrieving data from an XML column, uh, it will look something like this. Where I've selected the first name, last name, additional contact info from person up person. And since there was a lot of people here, I just wanted to see uh, the records that actually had additional contact info. So that's where, why I use the where additional contact info is not null. And you can see that Gustavo Achong uh, has additional information. I will bring this up in the demonstration coming up uh, just to show you uh, what that XML information will look like. Now, another way of using XML within SQL is after I write a SQL statement, I may want to show it in XML format. And I can do that by using the for XML statement. Now there are actually four different ways of doing a for XML. You can use for XML raw, for XML auto, for XML explicit, and for XML path. For this tutorial, we're just going to stick with for XML raw and for XML auto. And then finally, I will also show you how to use the open XML function. So if someone sends you XML data, you will know how to prepare the document into memory, how to pull the data out by using open XML function, and then finally clean up your memory by using the remove document. So that's what we're going to see in the demonstration coming up. All right, welcome back. We're going to go ahead and start our demonstration uh, of the XML uh, data types. Again, I will show you that in the person.person .person table, uh, we do have the additional contact. Let me open up this uh, window a little bit more so we can see it. And you can see that uh, it does have two columns in the person.person .person table, the additional contact info and demographics. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and hit my little push pin here so we got some more real estate to type in our code. And you can see that I've already written the code uh, that we saw in our PowerPoint slide. The select first name, last name, additional contact info from person that person where additional contact info is not null. Uh, so we see our friend Gustavo here. And if I click on additional contact info, we'll be able to see that that information is additional contact information uh, his phone number, special instructions, uh, only call after 5 o'clock, uh, telephone number, note that the customer has a secondary home address. So this is just additional information I can store in that XML column. And you can see I have additional contact info for about 10 of my people. So again, that was uh, just a brief demonstration of using XML in a column uh, or using XML as a data type within a column. Next we're going to see how to take a simple select statement and put it into an XML format. I'm going to start off with a, our four XML statement. And as I mentioned previously, that there are four different ways of using four XML. We can use four XML raw, four XML auto, we have four XML path, and four, sorry, four XML explicit, ex, explicit. There you go. Now for this demonstration, we're just going to stick with the basics for XML raw and for XML auto. Uh, the explicit and path is, is a little bit uh, more than what we need for this demonstration. So if I just take a basic select statement, first name, last name, from the person.person .person table, I'm aliasing it as the person for XML raw. So when I execute this code, you can see I do get my XML information. If I click on that link, I'll see my XML data, but it just brings it back as raw information where each of my rows, I have row, 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 row. Uh, so I have row elements, begin and end row element with the attributes, first name, last name. Now, if I wanted to see that with, uh, with the elements, I'll go ahead and close out that query. We already used that one. Well, I probably, probably want to save that. If I wanted to, did want to see that with elements, I can put a comma, elements, execute, and get, get in raw format. It's still, uh, still in rows, but now instead of having attributes, I did put them in a element. Or they're using first name, last name as elements. Okay. Now I'm going to come back here, and another way of, as I mentioned before, another way of using 4XML is using the 4XML auto statement. In this case, it's going to auto format it for me, or as well as it can, given the information that I have. Where raw just brought back raw XML. So I'll go ahead and execute. And now when I click on it, you can see it, it did actually format. And instead of saying row, 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 now it has person, person, person. It gets that information because that was the alias of the table I was using. And then again, it went back to just using first name and last name as attributes. Okay. I'm going to go back to that code again. And as I mentioned before, we do want to, uh, if we did, did want to see as elements, I would just type in the word elements, click execute. I have my results here. And I click on the link. And all my data, instead of being in attributes, now they are in elements. Now, here we have we have person, we have another person. This is actually called a fragmented document because I do not have a root element that defines what's on this page. So if I did want to define this with the root element, I would need to go back to for XML auto and specify what my root element is. I uh, didn't mean to get rid of all the elements there, so root, and we'll say my root element is going to be people. And I am I still want it to be have elements elements so now when I uh, execute this query it formats everything for me and now I have I will have a root element and if we scroll all the way to the bottom uh, you will see that I have an ending element here's my ending element at the very bottom of the screen so scroll back up again so now I have a well-formed document because I have a root element and then all my uh, individual persons 
uh, R uh, in an element format. So that is how I retrieve my data uh, from a select statement, retrieve it, and put it into an XML format. So our last query, what we're going to do uh, is if someone actually sent me XML data, how would I take that XML data and put it into a tabular format? So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to declare two variables. A variable is a temporary placeholder to hold values. The first variable is to hold my XML text. The second variable I'm declaring is to hold the uh, an integer value of the current location in memory where my data is located. So I declared that variable as text, so I'm going to put some XML data in here. I was doing a people, uh, people root element with two persons, and I'm bringing, bringing them in as attributes. Winston Smith, and then I have my Bjorn identity. So after I have that XML text, I will uh, run a store procedure, a built-in store procedure that comes from Microsoft, called SP underscore XML underscore prepared document. What that's going to do is it's going to shred this XML data and it's going to place it into memory. Uh, this procedure returns an integer value back to me, that output statement there, will return that value back to me on its location. And then I also have the XML text uh, that the data that is going to be sent to that prepared document. Once I have uh, the data shredded, then I would use my open XML statement uh, to uh, retrieve the data from that location in memory. Where's that location in memory? Well, I'm storing it in that variable at handle. So I don't have to actually know the actual location. I, I just store that value in, in the at handle uh, variable. Then my next argument for open XML is to traverse down through the XML from the root element people down to the next element level, nesting level person, to retrieve the data that was located there. In this case, I want to find first name and last name. So it will retrieve the first name, last name, and put it into uh, the result set of having two columns, first name with a var variable character 50 and the last name variable character 50. Once I retrieve that information, the last thing I want to do is clean up after myself uh, by using the store procedure uh, SP underscore XML underscore remove document to remove the XML memory tree uh, that was located again wherever that value was of at handle. Uh, again that's my location in memory. So if I execute this it will actually convert my XML data into a nice clean tabular format. So in these demonstrations uh, I have demonstrated again how to work with XML data types, how to, how to retrieve data uh, and put it into an XML format and then finally, if someone sends you XML data, how to put that into a tabular format. So thank you for watching our tutorial on how to use XML with SQL.